Hi, this is Dr. Luis de la Torre. I am Associate Professor of Surgery in Pediatrics at the University of Colorado and Assistant Director of the International Center for Colorectal and Urogenital Care at Children's Hospital Colorado in Denver. And I'm here today to talk about our bowel management program for idiopathic constipation with a success rate greater than 95%. Idiopathic constipation is the most everyday GI problem in pediatrics. We call it idiopathic because we don't know the cause even after several studies. However, always a motility problem is present in all these patients. These problems affect patients of any age, from newborns to teenagers and adults. Most patients suffering from idiopathic constipation are well controlled with appropriate and personalized medical treatment. It's important to remember that no standard medical therapy exists. When unsuccessful treatment continues for a long time, the patient develops complications. The most common are soiling and an abnormal overgrowth of the rectus sigmoid. As this problem persists, some patients will require an operation. Idiopathic constipation is a clinical spectrum. Some patients resolve constipation with change in food or with soft laxatives. These children are on the benign side of the spectrum. But it could be a complex problem where the patient suffers severe constipation. These patients are on the worst side of the spectrum. Idiopathic constipation is a manageable problem and often is a long life problem. To be successful in constipation control, we must find the proper medical treatment for each patient. We must avoid error traps in treating idiopathic constipation to prevent complications. Safety culture in constipation is necessary to succeed. The most common error trap is not to evaluate the fecal load with an abdominal x-ray. This simple study is the most reliable way to know how sick the patient is and helps to decide the initial treatment and guide the follow-up. For example, an x-ray showing many hard stool balls indicate the necessity of an enema before a laxative. These patients have an obstruction named fecal impaction. To prescribe a laxative when the rectum or most of the large bowel contains hard stool balls produce abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and fecal accidents. The safety plan is to first resolve any stool accumulation in the rectus sigmoid with an anema before attempting the use of laxatives. The enema could be an over-the-counter enema or a rectal enema using a catheter and a particular enema recipe containing saline solution and glycerin. Once the patient's rectum is clean, Another error trap is prescribing osmotic laxative instead of stimulant laxative. Osmotic laxatives do not stimulate the motility of the large bowel and produce overflow bowel movements, mainly in moderate or severe constipation. This abnormal bowel movement receives different names. Most common are encopresis and accidents. Even more, these fake or pseudo bowel movements due to osmotic laxative facilitate the chronic accumulation of stool in the rectum becoming a vicious cycle. The safety plan is to prescribe stimulant laxatives. Senna is one of the most effective stimulant laxatives. Prescribing the dosage of stimulant laxatives according to the manufacturer's recommendation is another trap error. Every patient has a different response to stimulant laxatives. 
The safety plan is to give the amount of sena on the severity of the constipation. To guesstimate the dose of stimulant laxative, we must consider chronicity, size of the rectum observed in a contrast enema, history of poop accidents, and fecal impactions. The safety plan is to evaluate every 24 hours the effect of the amount of laxative. A common error is to assess the patient weeks or months after the initial dose. Bowel movement should be evaluated and modified if needed every day until we find the amount of stimulant laxative that produce a good bowel movement. After the initial dose, we need an x-ray after a bowel movement. If we observe residual stool in the rectum indicates that the patient needs more stimulant laxative. Contrary, a clean x-ray after a bowel movement means an adequate amount of laxative. Trial and error is the best way to find an adequate amount of laxative for every patient. This trial usually lasts for three to seven days. Because the goal of managing constipation is to produce only one significant bowel movement daily, then patient need to take once a day at the same time the stimulant laxative. Prescribing a stimulant laxative twice daily or every six hours is incorrect. In several cases, with several months or years with unsuccessful medical treatment, our bowel management with enemas controls constipation in all our patients. Then we can try to transition the patient to our laxative program. Fortunately, only 1% of our patients will require a surgical procedure to improve their quality of life. We have used SENA as a stimulant laxative for many years without any side effect. A recent study published in the Journal of Pediatric Surgery demonstrated the superiority of SENA without any side effects compared to polyethylene glycol. This study was terminated early because the interim analysis showed a clear benefit of SENA and it was considered unethical to continue prescribing polyethylene glycol during this study. Thank you for watching this video. This has been Dr. De La Torre at Children's Hospital Colorado. For more information, give us a call or visit the link on the screen.